And welcome to Scrolling to Death. I'm back with one of my favorite people, Titania Jordan of Bark Technologies. Hi, Titania. Hello, Nikki. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so awesome to be speaking with you. And I get to see you in real life soon. So mm-hmm. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Super excited. We get what, like an, a gala night out. That's not in my normal schedule. <laughs> Definitely not my typical Tuesday. No. <laughs> Are you staying for a few days down in LA? Um, I will be uh, more in like the Laguna Niguel area. Okay. That's where our CTO is located. Yeah. Um, and his family. But uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of speaking engagements next week across the state. So hopefully some parents will show up and we'll help keep kids safer online. You've been doing a lot of speaking in, to schools too and parents, right? Yes. Yeah. Because... It's one thing to reach them via, you know, an Instagram reel mm-hmm. or a Facebook group post, but yeah. you can meet these parents in person and mm-hmm. hear their personal stories and show them, you know, the settings and walking them through. It's just mm-hmm. a whole different ball game. Yeah. And hearing their struggles so that you can inform what you guys are doing at Bark, right? And really target the solutions to the parents' problems. Exactly. Yeah. That's the goal, right? <laughs> Um, It's hard to keep up with all of these harms, though. So today we're talking about uh, a really important issue that's sweeping the world, um, and that is sextortion, specifically financial sextortion, um, is on the cover of the New York Times today. Uh, We've both been studying and talking about this separately, and I think we should just compare notes so that parents are up to speed and know what to talk to their children about and how to protect them. Let's start with the basics, and then I I do have an update from this morning. I was uh, sent an internal document from Meta from several years ago related to this, so I'll share that information kind of, I think, where it comes in naturally, but let's start um, at the basics. So what is sextortion? Do you want to take that one, or should I? I do, but like, oh, the suspense. I know. I'm really (laughs) Oh, Nikki. I know. All right. Yeah. And like, we've got to talk about Paul or File. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yep. But, so sextortion. Yes. What is sextortion? Yes. Um, it's a crime that involves adults coercing children and teenagers into sending explicit images online. And I think a lot of people hear sextortion and they're, the part of their brain shuts down when it, when it, the, the, the part of the brain that thinks about like, oh, this is applicable to my family, yeah. that part shuts down. They're right. like, no way, this right. doesn't apply. Right. It absolutely applies. Right. It applies so much that the FBI has released multiple warnings, public warnings mm-hmm. about this problem affecting mm-hmm. children, good kids, our kids. Yeah. Like, this is a problem and you've got to pay attention to it. Yeah. And with financial sextortion, it's like the scammer is asking for money or they'll share the sensitive photo with right. the child's or teenager's friends and family and schoolmates and things like that. So um, where is this happening? So I'm hearing Instagram, Snapchat, and Wiz, which do you know about Wiz? So yep. tell, tell listeners about Wiz because that was new to me. It's like a Tinder for teens, like a, you can swipe and – which. Yeah. I'm pulling up our app review because it's yeah, um, please. very comprehensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, <laughs> Wiz calls itself a safe space where you can let loose and meet new friends from all over the world. No. Well, you and I both can read between the lines uh, mm-hmm. to see what that means. You know, yeah. it's it's rated 12 plus in the app store. Oh, no. I can tell you no, no 12 year old needs this. No. At all. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, offering the ability to, to chat with anybody in the world, mm-hmm. like not okay. Yeah. And, and where this happens, it's yeah. not just Instagram. It's not just Snapchat. It's not just Wiz. Mm-hmm. It's any digital place mm-hmm. where your child can communicate with another human. Mm-hmm. And so that means it could just be in text messages. Mm-hmm. It could also be in gaming Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if your child plays Roblox and you don't have the chat function turned off, they can start chatting with somebody and get convinced to move to another device or platform. Mm -hmm. This can happen anywhere a child is spending time where they are allowed to message other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially if the messages disappear like Snapchat or there's end-to-end encryption like Facebook Messenger and many other platforms. Or WhatsApp. 
Or yeah, WhatsApp. and that end-to-end -end encryption, like that's a whole nother episode, but mm -hmm. that didn't used to be the case. Mm -hmm. And they moved now to mm -hmm. have end-to-end -end encryption, which makes discovering <laughs> it and, and prosecuting it even harder. Yeah, great. Okay, so who it, is this? Great. I always, I can't, sarcastically, very sarcastically, I'm saying great. Um, who is this happening to from what you've seen? This is happening to children that are young enough to read. Like if they can read, that they can, this is happening to them, mm -hmm. um, or if they have access to a device um, that allows strangers to video chat with them and communicate to them before they could even read, but they can understand mm -hmm. human communication. Yeah. That's, that's my dog. That's okay. Um, not only is this happening to young, naive children. Yeah. Um, this is happening to children who are almost 18 mm -hmm. and that's, What's so heartbreaking to see is, for example, you know, children like Jordan May mm -hmm. and, and other children who are, you know, 16, 17, mm -hmm. straight A students, right. uh, top of top of their class performers, whether it's in sports or art or dance or music, like mm -hmm. th they're very loved, very supportive, very outgoing, very active. And for whatever reason, um, they don't feel like they can raise their hand and let somebody mm -hmm. know, wait a minute, this turned down a bad path. Yeah. And they think that their only choice is to die by suicide. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and the scammers are targeting teens, teenagers, specifically boys, but girls too, but teenagers that have something to lose. So that could be a sports star or someone that just told everybody they have a college scholarship that they got, or they, or even if they have a girlfriend, like the scammers are targeting people that have something to lose that would pay money if, uh, so that their nude photo doesn't get out, which is disgusting. How many kids are getting targeted? So I'll share some stats here. So in 2021, the reported cases to NECMEC, the National Center for Ex Missing and Exploited Children, was just 139 cases of financial sextortion. And two years later, in 2023, that number was over 26,000. And these are just reported cases right. and experts are saying that less than 10% of sex extortion incidents are actually getting reported. People don't, families don't want to let everybody know that this has happened. So the numbers are probably more like in the quarter of a million or higher of Americans who've been targeted with sex extortion. And that number is just spiking. <clears throat> so it's heartbreaking. I, I, yeah. uh, I was reading through the, the latest report from Nick Mick, mm -hmm. uh, around all of this and which platforms this is happening on and who's reporting it and who's not and who's who's even responding to Nick Mick when they pursue leads from their tip line and it, all of it okay. it's a lot and i mean some experts are telling me nearly every teenager will be will be targeted even with that first step which is just a friend request and a lot of kids don't accept it. And so there, you've been targeted. Um, and most kids don't accept it, but many do uh, accept that friend request and then start to engage in the chat. So let's talk about who's doing the scamming. Do you want to fill listeners in a little bit on that? I mean, yes, mm -hmm. uh, but please support this, you know, because you have yeah. just as much information yeah. as I do, if yeah. not more. Because right. um, you're spending a lot of time in this and mm -hmm. speaking to uh, parents whose children have been victims of this, as well as law enforcement officials who yeah. are dealing with this. Right. Um, but the what I have seen, mm -hmm. the majority of which scammers, scammer. Thank you. Like, I, I want to think of a better word because they're not. It's like predators, scammer. I mean, they're. It's just so bad. It scammers doesn't feel bad enough, but I can't think. I've been saying scammers. <laughs> I mean, murderers, mm -hmm. like mm. awful, terrible people. Yeah, they're the encouraging majority... children to die. It's just, anyways. Yeah. So the majority of sex sorters, mm -hmm. um, I believe, are uh, part of a ring called the Yahoo Boys, uh, mm -hmm. based out of Nigeria. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole network. Yeah. There are multiple Facebook groups that these people and organizations belong to mm -hmm. that get together and talk about how to do this to more children. Public and Facebook groups, public that yeah. have over a hundred thousand members that are currently yes. live right now. Have not been taken down. Yep. Yeah. So 
hundreds of thousands of scammers, okay? And most of them on, in West Africa, and Nigeria. And each of those runs a dozen or a couple dozen accounts. So it's been estimated that there's like hundreds of thousands of these scam accounts currently on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and they do work together. So one thing that was so crazy to me is in Jordan DeMay's case, it was six hours from when he was first contacted to when Jordan took his life. And he was faced with, he was talking with, there's four men in a room together in the Nigerian men. One's chatting with Jordan. One is working on like the cash transaction. One is creating imagery of all of Jordan's friends so that they can prove they know all, all of his friends and family. One is researching, doing research, finding information on just, so they're all working together to extort, sextort Jordan. I mean, and this is like, these kids don't stand a chance when you, they're working from scripts, proven scripts that have been run through hundreds of thousands of children. So, okay. Now is where we're going to talk about, are the platforms doing anything to protect our kids from sextortion? I haven't heard the platforms talking about sextortion until this year when Meta announced they're going to blur nude images in direct messages. And we've talked about this before. And I was, I thought, great, that's going to solve the problem. The, the kid won't be able to send a nude and they can't get sextorted. That is the solution. But right. can you update listeners on what actually happens once the image is blurred? Yeah. So April 11th, 2024, Meta made a blog post titled new tools to help protect against sextortion and intimate image abuse. Mm -hmm. um, now the problem is that uh, they will blur the photo, yeah. but you can still view the photo. It still gives you the opportunity to view it, to send it. It's like they're giving you a bit of a speed bump to mm -hmm. try to slow you down, but it's not stopping the vehicle of distribution um, of CSAM, child mm -hmm. sexual abuse material. Right. And if they have the ability to detect a nude on a child's account, mm -hmm. how is that even allowed? Why are we even allowing this? I don't Why are we know. not shutting it down? I don't understand because that is a solution. And there are many solutions that they could have employed over the last few years. And, and they're acting like they're just realizing that this is happening. And so here's what I found out today. Okay. So a man who used to work in a contractor role for Meta in 2018, he shared with me an internal document called a safety escalation tracker. And it's like a 60 something page document of incidents. And then what they did with the incident. This is from 2018 and it has two months of incidents. And of the 800, 807 entries, sextortion is mentioned 230 times in the document in 2018. Financial sextortion is mentioned and Nigeria is mentioned. In 2018, in Meta's internal documents, they were already reporting internally that sextortion was happening. Yet in the last five years, they have done nothing meaningful to protect our children from sextortion. If I was the parent of a child that had been affected by this, God help me if I came across anybody who had anything to do with not making that platform safer. I mean, yeah. honestly, it's unconscionable. Like, you know, they're, they have this whole long blog post of all the things they're working on. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not that hard. You, you read no. Paul Raphael's six tips that he posted on LinkedIn recently. Like yeah. those are things that they can do today. Yeah. Right. And so Meta hired Paul Raphael to help them with their sextortion problem. And then Paul did a webinar um, the, the, month, the week before he was supposed to start at Meta. And he mentioned how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of fake profiles there are on Facebook and Instagram that are exploiting children for financial sextortion. And within minutes or about an hour after this webinar, they rescinded the offer. Meta rescinded the offer for Paul. It's like, why would you not hire the guy that knows where all the bad guys are on your platform? And why are more people not talking about this? Like, I, I, mm. I, I mean, again, like I, there's only so much influence I have, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Certainly if you're the president, uh, if you're like, do something, this is not okay. Yeah. So the president, so president Biden did just pass the report act which 
requires, so let me actually pull this up so I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. So headline, Biden, Biden signs bipartisan law targeting child sex extortion online. And so the Report Act will require, it'll modernize and streamline how CSAM is stored and, re, CSAM is stored and reported to NECMEC. So there will now be requirements and fines for the platforms to fail if they fail to report uh, these cases. Um, and they have to hold on to the evidence longer. Yes, so like right. I, so I applaud, like I am so thrilled mm -hmm. that the Report Act was passed. Right. It's also ridiculous that it was just passed. That was, How was this not like, really, really? Um, but, you know, it's just not okay. It's just not okay. None of this is okay. Yeah. And the sooner we can raise awareness, mm -hmm. uh, contact our local legislators mm -hmm. and, and strongly encourage them to keep fighting for what's right for our kids. Like mm -hmm. we can't stop. And if we don't, who else will? Nobody will. No, these companies are never going to see our children as human beings. They're going to see them as dollar signs in their profit center. And that's it. We can't expect them to do the right thing. Like the right thing would be to protect our children from sex extortion five years ago by making any number of changes. And it's so infuriating that they ne they never do the right thing and they do PR campaigns to make it seem like they're doing the right thing. But when you read in the fine print, they're not doing anything at all. So a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I know you saw that internal document today mm -hmm. and that's, what's got you fired up. Mm -hmm. I today got some notification on Snapchat, opened it up and Snapchat is letting me know that I can have a public profile, um, oh, to God. let people like follow me publicly and you have a child um, account right like a test account as a child yes uh i but this is actually for my adult oh account. okay but, okay but here's the thing children i'm scrolling to it now so i can read it verbatim but like children don't give snapchat their real age no so it's right like true right so introducing your public profile show off your best snaps grow your audience oh. reach more people get deeper insights okay but snapchat you have billboards across the nation saying you're not social media who, what, what? I know, I know, I know. They're so desperate. Every time I open it, I have a test account. It's turn on notifications, add all these people. It like is really overtly prompting you to get your profile public, connect with as many people as possible, get alerts turned on. Like, why are we encouraging kids to turn on notifications? Yeah, reach more people. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Tatanya. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Anyway, so right. back, we've, we've back to sex portion. Yeah. But we've concluded that these platforms are don't have our kids' best interests at heart. They are not looking out for our kids' safety. So we have to prepare our kids if we decide to let them on social media. We have to prepare yes. them for threats like sextortion. So I am encouraging all parents to listen to my interview with Paul Raphael, listen to my interview with John DeMay about Jordan's story. Um, a mom just reached out to me saying, she had her 14 year old son listen to both of these in order to prepare him. And it's, if kids are old enough to be on social media, they're old enough to hear these stories and they need to. 100%. Um, any other tips, yeah. if your kids are going to be on social media, what do you need to tell them related to sextortion? Yes. Before you let your child have access mm -hmm. to a device that can connect to the internet mm -hmm. or the world, mm -hmm. whether it's cell signal or Wi-Fi, yeah. please let them know that there's nothing they can ever do that can separate them from your unconditional love, mm -hmm. including if they take a photo, send a photo, receive a photo uh, that they might be embarrassed of, mm -hmm. that is never, ever, ever, ever a reason to take their life. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Um, your hope is that they're never involved in any of that. But you also know that kids are doing this and that's it's impacting kids mm -hmm. and kids have died because of this yeah. and you do not want it to be your child. Mm -hmm. And so having those candid conversations with them, letting them know that you know what's up mm -hmm. and that you're a safe place and you'll figure it out together yep. is critical. It's, it's literally life-saving. Yeah. Thank you for leading with that. That's most important. If, if you do this, if you make this mistake, I'll handle it. I'll fix it. It's going to be okay. Hope is not lost. Like, and then follow on with this could happen to you. So it's best not to add strangers online and not to take nude images or share them online. Um, yeah. 
But if your child does do this and you, you tell them, you, you know what to do, this is what you need to do. The kid cannot, should not, or cannot pay money. Um, they need to block the profile, report it, but also then change their username or better yet deactivate your account for a couple of weeks. Cause these, even if you just change your username, they can still find you through another account. They'll set up a new account or they have dozens of accounts already and they'll find you a different way. So, um, Paul Raphael recommended like deactivate your account for a couple of weeks. And by then they've moved on to another victim, which is sad in itself. And then if your child is a minor, um, you go to NECMEC, N-C-M-E-C dot org to their cyber tip line and report the incident. Even if a nude image was not sh shared or taken, even if it's just the beginning of a sex extortion attempt, pl please report it so that they have accurate numbers. Yeah. There's one other thing I would add there. Um, you mentioned during the process, you know, to block them, Yeah. but before you block them, take screenshots document Thank everything you. because right. once you block them, yep. you might not be able to access that. And then mm -hmm. the evidence is lost. Yeah. Right. Okay. So sextortion is very scary and we want to protect our kids from this happening. And luckily we have tools like the bark phone and the bark parental control app to help us out. So can you tell listeners how bark can help prevent and alert parents to sextortion scams? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you have the bark phone, it's, it's the best first phone for kids. The bark phone doesn't allow children to even take nude photos or videos. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas, you know, an iPhone does. Right. Um, so the bark phone can prevent that sort of image or media from even existing. Mm -hmm. Um, the bark phone and the bark app can alert you to a variety of things, including the sending or receiving of inappropriate photos, videos, material, mm -hmm. also the conversations the grooming conversations, the threatening conversations, when it starts to involve finances, um, obviously anything involving suicidal ideation, like go kill yourself, mm. you should just kill yourself, mm -hmm. et cetera. Like there are multiple, I would say safety nets mm -hmm. that come with having the Bark phone or the Bark app installed mm -hmm. that can alert you that this sort of thing is happening. Yeah. Um, so you don't end up uh, in the, in this, horrific situation. Yeah. Just the peace of mind with the bark phone, not allowing them to take the nude image. Like it doesn't get saved. They can try. It doesn't get saved. Yeah. That yeah. just fully protects them from any of this ever happening to them. And yeah. can all phones do this? Like too? like, why should minors be able to take nude images of themselves and then share them online? Right. Right. I would love for you to interview somebody from Apple and I would love for them to answer mm -hmm. that because they have communication safety, which like Instagram will blur it, mm -hmm. but still allow the child to send it, view it, receive it, et cetera. So it's like not helpful. Kids shouldn't even be allowed to have an iPhone. I'm sorry. No. I'll say it. No, I, no. I mean, we, we, you and I both agree on that. Yeah. But I don't want to judge anybody. You know, I know parents are like, I'm an Apple family, so I have to get my kid an iPhone. What do you say when people say that to you? Yeah, you don't, you absolutely don't. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I didn't, you know, the bark phone didn't exist when my son was younger. Um, but wow, if it did, we could have avoided a lot of, a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, a, a lot of trauma, like goodness gracious, iPhones are not good. They're not, not the best first phone for kids. They're just not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I hope that listeners will seriously consider the Bark phone or at least the Bark parental control app for the iPhone or Android that they're using for their child. Um, but it's important that parents get educated on the online harms and sextortion right now is exploding. And so these conversations are very important. Parents, please tell all your friends um, about this topic because like we said, it likely will uh, come your child's way if they're online. So um, Titania, thank you so much for having this conversation with me and for comparing notes and always doing everything you can to help parents protect their children. So thank you so much and to the team at Bark as well. Thank you, Nikki. Your, your podcast, your video content, your posts, are so helpful and like our tech, I believe your content is, is helping to save lives. Mm. So keep it up. Thanks. Thank you, Titania.